A hundredth uh, win, what an amazing milestone for him. So very happy for him and his program. Uh, like I said last week, we were uh, on the road again uh, for another uh, tough week as far as the number of matches and the type of competition we were going up against. And we ended the week two and two. And on the record, um, you know, we obviously two and two is not exactly where we'd like to be. Uh, you know, we step on the court and want to win uh, every single match that we play. Um, but I saw a lot of things this week that uh, really excite me a lot, um, especially the growth from the beginning of the week till the end of the week. We had Iowa State last week, and I won't talk a lot about that match, but um, we played a tough Iowa State team on their home court, and we had a lot of points where we really battled hard. And I think it's just the thing that I talked about last week is trying to find that consistency to play at that level uh, every single point. And if you can't do that against those big dog teams, uh, you're going to have a hard time pulling those matches out. Um, but we had an opportunity um, to have a chance to win that match. You know, in the fourth game, we were ahead, had our chances to put that match away and weren't able to, or put that game away, which would have sent it into the fifth game. And as you guys all know, anything can happen in that fifth game. So we are excited that we put ourselves in a position to be able to push it to the fifth game, but unfortunately um, not excited about the fact that we weren't able to to finish that game out. But a lot of good things we saw on Wednesday night. It was a tough atmosphere to play in, and I thought our kids handled that pretty well for the most part. So a lot of good things came from that match. Uh, it was a very tough and exhausting match for us, uh, both physically and mentally. So uh, we decided to take the next day off Thursday and just watch film, uh, kept them off their feet, and did a little bit of film. And then even on Friday, had a shorter practice because uh, we had two, uh, four mat or three matches on the weekend. Um, two on Saturday and one on Sunday, so needed, felt we needed the rest more than we needed anything else. Went to Marquette and played uh, Wake Forest uh, on Saturday uh, morning and had a pretty good match against them. I think it was, again, a little bit inconsistent, but um, against a team like that, it didn't show as much. We were able to still um, do some things that um, kind of counteracted that, so uh, we talked about that because we said, you know, those are the kinds of mistakes we cannot make uh, when we're playing teams that are ranked a little bit higher. So we talked about that. Headed into the Michigan match, uh, ranked number 23 at the time. And unfortunately, I think um, it was probably one of the toughest matches for us as coaches because we really felt uh, we had huge opportunities in that match. And we had so many unforced errors, uh, whether it was serving or attacking errors. And I think besides the number that we had, they just really came at inopportune times. We had gotten the momentum going several times, and then we'd hit a serve in the bottom of the net. And that kind of thing, it just deflates you, uh, especially when you're battling hard for each point. I felt like the Michigan match, every point that we got, we had to battle hard, and then we gave away a lot of really easy points to Michigan. And that's something you just cannot do when you're playing some of the top teams in the country. So it was a little frustrating on our side for that. Again, that fourth game, we lost by two points. So had the opportunity to push it into that fifth game and, and weren't able to do that. Uh, so I know our kids were pretty down after that match. Uh, it was also a very physical match for us. And then uh, we were turning around on Sunday at 2 o'clock to play a very good Marquette team. Marquette had beat Michigan on Friday night. And I honestly feel like Marquette is probably the second best team that we've played this year. Um, USC being the first, uh, but they have every part of their game. They're scrappy on defense. Uh, they have a lefty on the outside that we've never seen before, uh, which is tough to play against. They run the best slide that we've come up against this year. So a very solid team, extremely well coached. Uh, so we knew it would be a battle. And it also was their seventh, I think, home match of the season. Uh, they have 22 home matches. I can't figure out how he got that done. but. I got to talk to him about that because that would be really nice. But their seventh home match, so obviously they're feeling very comfortable uh, at home. And I could not be prouder of our kids. And the biggest reason in my mind was, first of all, we had that fourth game and we were ahead and finished it out and were able to push it to the fifth game. And that's the first time we've done that this year. Um, you know, being in that situation, you could, you know, we definitely could have went the other way and thought, okay, we've been in this position two other times and didn't finish it out. But our kids hung in there. Um, the second thing is, is we still made, in my mind, just as many mistakes, um, but we didn't allow those mistakes to snowball into mistake after mistake after mistake. And that's something that we've been doing. You know, we still have communication problems out there. We still have unforced errors that we need to take care of, but we didn't allow that to snowball into a lot of other things. And a lot of those things we're going to be able to fix and get better at uh, once we get into the practice gym. So 
to me, to see the fight that we had in that Marquette match was one of the most positive things that we've seen so far this year. So very proud of our kids. Uh, I think, uh, again, this week we put our kids in another challenging situation. We have four matches again this week, uh, and our kids are tired. I'm not going to lie. Uh, we're not going to do a thing today, uh, not watch film. We're not going to be on our feet. They're just going to take a day off. Uh, they definitely need that uh, physically and mentally, and we're going to get ourselves ready for a battle tomorrow against Northern Illinois. We're extremely excited to be at home, and I hope that that, um, that adrenaline helps us a little bit on uh, Tuesday because uh, Northern Illinois is a very good team. Uh, they just beat uh, Missouri State this weekend at Missouri State, and Missouri State, as you know, is one of our top teams in our conference. They went five uh, with Wichita State a couple weeks ago, so a very good Northern Illinois team. Uh, we played them this spring. They beat us this spring. Uh, so very good team, uh, well coached, and so we'll, we will have to be ready uh, to play tomorrow night, but obviously excited about that. And then we head on the weekend, we actually start our conference play, and we go up against Bradley, who at the end of the season last year was much improved. We're winning a lot of matches, uh, and they've really carried that into um, this season. They have beat two opponents that were NCAA tournament um, uh, teams last year, uh, so that's huge for them. Uh, the other thing is, Bradley is our travel partner, so lots of times when you play your travel partner the first weekend, you try to host a tournament as well. So we will be playing two more matches on the weekend. We'll play Arkansas State and Long Beach State uh, on Saturday. So besides being prepared for conference, which is obviously the most important thing for us right now, uh, we're going to have to turn around and prepare for two other teams on Saturday. So another challenging week. Uh, we won't be practicing a lot, again, because of that. Um, we, as coaches, really are looking forward to uh, getting in that gym at some point and working on the things that we need to get better at. But uh, I know our kids are excited about the competition ahead and also obviously for the home match. So please come out and watch us. Uh, we would love to have, you know, we have some of the best fans in the country year in and year out, and we feel so fortunate for that. So um, again, the, the season tickets for $20 for uh, volleyball and women's basketball, you can't get a better deal than that. So we hope to, to have a great crowd tomorrow night for our kids. You mentioned your girls are kind of tired. I mean, at what point does getting battle tested become a detriment almost? Yeah, you know, and every year I think I, I rethink it after it's too late. Um, but it, it is definitely a challenge in that way. But, you know, I know our kids are going to find a way to dig deep and, and figure it out. I think, you know, one of the things is we're still not sure about a lineup. You know, I think if we could get more solid with what we're doing, we can make some changes to give kids a little bit of a break. Um, but we haven't been able to do that yet. Um, but, you know, September is always tough for us, but like for, for us, we have to play those teams in the month of September. We're not going to get the opportunity to do that any other time of the year. So, um, but sometimes you wonder if, if it's a little bit too much, but hopefully our kids will be ready to go. You know, we're trying to give them the amount of rest they need and, and get those legs fresh and get ready for some good matches. You get into that fifth set yesterday, down early. Well, if you ask Amy Brown, it's because of the side she chose. But <laughs> no, but I think um, the biggest thing is we were down 4-0 and I think 8-4 at the turn. And that's what I was talking about with, with their ability to not let things bother them. They really worked hard. We always talk about playing a one point at a time. And sometimes they do that and sometimes they don't. And that was definitely a match where we were able to do that. Um, I think the biggest thing is, you know, I, I would like to point out Amy Brown's performance this weekend. Every single match, she was the fighter we needed, and I think people fed off of her in that match. Um, she really took control out there, and the biggest difference in my mind is we stayed aggressive. You know, we didn't back away. We had a nothing-to-lose attitude when the score was 8-4, and, and that was the biggest difference. How does the lack of practice time affect the way you approach matches, especially if you're still looking for a solidified lineup? I think you know one of the things we do is we pick um, one, maybe two things that we want to focus on uh, that also are things that we want to get better at. And I think that's basically the only thing that we can do right now. We have done some different things uh, with the lineup and trying different things. Um, there actually has been maybe one or two other lineup changes we'd like to try, but feel like they're too big of changes to not practice. Um, so when we get a chance to practice, we'll determine if that's something we want to do. Um, and it's going to have to be during conference play. But I think if we can get in practice and see, it's mostly um, matchups with our serve and pass that we're worried about because we feel really good about our passing game right now. And to mess with that right now, I think, is not a positive thing. So that's why we're kind of keeping things a little bit the same, um, but changing maybe different people in and out. 
All right, we'll see you tomorrow. All right, we were up at uh, Minnesota uh, this weekend at the Oz Memorial Race, and uh, had another good weekend on the cross country side. Uh, on the women's side, Haley Thomas uh, was our first finisher for us. She finished 16th overall. Last year, she wasn't able to run at this meet. She was battling uh, some injuries, and so uh, she's well ahead of where she was a year ago, which is exciting for her. Uh, Allison Fick was our second runner. She finished 22nd overall, and uh, she ran a whole an entire minute faster than she did last year at this time. And so she's really coming on a lot uh, stronger this year than she was a year ago. And uh, it's just a, a testament to her hard, hard work she's put in over the last year uh, to continue to improve and, and make those improvements. Uh, Lindsey Wilkins had a great race for us as well, a senior from over in Illinois. Uh, she was 18 seconds faster than she was a year ago as well. And so we just really need to kind of work on our, our fourth and fifth runners and kind of get them to, to be a little bit closer together. Uh, we're, we're not full strength right now because Scotty Schoen has, has been out battling a little bit of an injury. And so once we get her back in the mix, we should be a lot stronger there. She was our third runner at conference last year. And so once we get everyone back together, uh, looking to be a little bit stronger as well. Even that being said, we were 15 seconds faster as a team on, on average than we were a year ago. Even though we're not at full strength, it's, a, it's some good improvement there. Uh, on the men's side, Brett Egan won his second race uh, in a row, and so we're excited about that. Coming into the year, he had not won a cross-country race in his collegiate career, and so uh, for him to win two in a row is just is really exciting for him. Uh, one of the hardest working kids I know on and off uh, the track and cross-country course. He, he's a 397 student in mathematics as well, so he, he really gets it done on both ends. Uh, Terry Nielsen was our second runner, sophomore from Cedar Falls. He improved by over 40 seconds uh, this week as opposed to last year, and so uh, he's really that leader that the leader of that second pack we have and really excited about his development and being a leader for the team uh, going forward. And, and the men's side, you know, our, our, our average as a team this year was 40 seconds faster than we were a year ago. And so it's nice to look back on that and to see the improvement we made in a year. Uh, we're still not where we need to be by any means, uh, but we're, we're going to continue to work hard over the next two weeks and, and forward in the season. Uh, in two weeks we go to Southern Illinois. It's always nice to get a little conference competition in there and see where we stack up there. And so uh, excited where we're at, but still have a lot of work to do. And uh, all right, as always, go Panthers. Um, we, uh, we, had, we had a rough week. Um, we've had uh, three losses uh, in, in that week and uh, a couple of them pretty heavy. Um, you know, some of that's down to our, our, our philosophy or my philosophy, I guess. Um, you know, when we, when we go down uh, in games, uh, we, we tend not to just kind of sit back and keep the score down. We want to go uh, and try to get the game back. And um, unfortunately, that leaves some, some gaps at the back. Uh, and two of the teams that we've played this, um, this week have exploited that a little bit and, uh, and kind of inflated the score line a little bit. But, um, if, you know, on reflection, you know, looking at those games and, and if, um, you know, being at those games, the, the games were a lot closer than the score line suggests. Um, you know, we're not playing great. I think we understand that. Um, and there's certainly some um, some focus and concentration issues that we've got to address uh, quickly. Um, but, you know, it, it, all in all, I think the girls are, are hanging in there. Um, you know, just like Bobby's uh, talking about volleyball there, we've been on the road a lot. Uh, and uh, that really does restrict how much practice time you have and how much time you can actually work on some of the issues that you have as a team. And so. So we're looking forward to this week. We're, we're taking the day off uh, too. Uh, we just got back from South Carolina uh, this morning. Um, so we're going to take the day off too, and then really come come back uh, tomorrow uh, and start working on some of the things that uh, that we need to work on uh, going into a, a home game on on Friday against North Dakota State. So um, we still got a couple of games left before we uh, get into conference. Um, we, we, you know, we have we've had a couple of injuries too, which uh, certainly aren't the reason why we're, we're losing games, but uh, ha haven't helped in terms of uh, continuity and, and and just get into some sort of team rhythm. Um, but uh, we're going to be working on the things that we need to work on, and hopefully we can have a, a good outing on Friday night at home uh, against North Dakota State. <coughs> any any questions on soccer? All right, thank you. Uh, Saturday was a good day. Good day. We uh, 
we came out and, and, and took care of them and had an opportunity to get a lot of guys in the football game. So uh, everything went well, and now we get ready for Iowa. So questions? A lot of times when you play Iowa, it's a season opening game. You've got two game films on them. Does that help you a little bit more this time around um, with them having two game films to look at? I, I don't know that it does. I mean, we've, you know, they've, it, it might so give you a little bit more sense of uh, confidence that you know what you're going to see because, you know, they do have a new offensive coordinator and a new defensive coordinator. So from that aspect, I would say it's nice to see what they're, what they're doing so you didn't have to, to, out, to out guess it. But at the same time, it's only two football games. So, you know, you can only get so much from that as well. But it, it's, to, to us, it's the University of Iowa, and, and they're, they're one of the great programs out there. So, you know, they're always a stable, sound, good football team. So we, we expect that as well on Saturday. It's a bit different having to.